Jacqueline? Yes, 81, no, 8. Rugby 7 is accepted as the Olympic sport. In just five short years since the announcement of rugby's re-entry into the Olympics, the sport has seen a relentless rise in participation and support in the United States. Every spring, the Penn Mutual Varsity Cup and Collegiate Rugby Championships showcase the passion and advancing talent of the next generation of American rugby players. The men's and women's U.S. Eagles have the world's attention as they march toward Rio. We set out on this journey five years ago to say this is where we're going to get to. Not only did we want to be there, but we want to be on the highest point on that podium and people would have thought we were crazy, but that's all programmatic building that's been happening over time. California, they have won their third straight collegiate rugby championship. Come on, Pinky, this is an area you need to get good at. Come on, better, better. People kind of forget how far we've come in, in kind of 12, 15 months. We were nothing, we were nobody. We expect to win. <laughs> a game with unique combinations of physicality and flair, simplicity and strategy, unrivaled unity and assumed responsibility, where every player is the last bastion between victory and defeat. I want other guys to say, not this guy again. Yet the true value of rugby may not even come from the physical and mental toughness learned on the pitch, but from the life lessons learned along the way. We go to the top university in the world, none of those guys out there has a PhD in team like you guys do. Rugby is a kind of moral compass instilling accountability, respect, and meaning. And that universal morality binds players together eternally. We call it the brotherhood. It's about understanding each other on and off the field. More than a sport, rugby is life. The second largest sport globally, rugby is advancing into the final frontier, the United States. And these are the stories of those making it happen. Rugby Rising is presented by Penn Mutual, your game plan for ensuring life. Here we come. OK, our tackle success rate has to go through the roof, OK? It's a big area. Individually, we're all responsible for We can all get right. If Nate's got the pill... The contact okay, situation is crucial both in attack and in the defence to so you can manipulate and create situations and opportunities you can take advantage of. Try and get that leg across and in, into that V. So, Joey, Joey, you're getting caught square, mate. What you're doing, you're like that. Now try and do it. Uh, and that's what we're working on. It's an area it? that we were very, very good at towards the end of last year. We fell off a little bit in the, in the last two tournaments. It's a real focus for us. It can be a real strength, but we've got to get smarter. We've got to get a bit more streetwise. We've got to be a little bit more physical than we have been previously. The men's Eagle 7 squad holds an important training camp in preparation for the next HSBC World Series 7s tournament held on their home soil in Las Vegas. The team right now is certainly enormously excited to be playing in front of a home crowd. That is huge, and this is the last big time they'll be able to do that before the big lights of Rio. I mean, I think Vegas is hugely important to us. It's really kind of where you show what you're about and where you show where you're going to go for the rest of the season. For me, it's about making sure we play to our potential. If we play to our potential, we will do ourselves justice in any tournament. Mate, you're being too nice, Matai. Don't think he's going to be nice to you. People kind of forget how far we've come in, in kind of 12, 15 months. Shutting out the US in the second half. We were shield team, we were, we were a nothing, we were a nobody. We were also rands, we weren't even contenders, we were participants. That's better, that's the level I want from you three. That's the level. We won our first ever championship in London last year and you know, first tier two nation to achieve that. The first one for the USA. Uh, and that was a huge achievement for the boys. Too nice, giving him too much of a lip to hit. Drop the fervour, put him under more pressure, you big old lumps. Going from being given a less than 10% chance of qualification for the Olympics, when I arrived, by the time we got to the Olympic qualifier, we were deemed to be 90% certainty of, of qualifying. Ah, we're cooking! Your transition from up is too slow. OK, how we react to where the breakdown is and whether it's a lever or... The boys have come a long way. And unfortunately, with that success comes expectation. And being able to de deal with that expectation and that accountability is something that we're coming to terms with, um, which is a great thing. But we can't rest on our laurels, we've got to move forward. If we're standing still, we're going backwards.
The last Olympic game of rugby was played in 1924, where the United States defeated France 17 to three. In October of 2009, the IOC announced that the 2016 Olympics in Rio would once again include the sport of rugby. So knowing that the Olympics were gonna happen in 2016, not only did we wanna be there, but we wanna be on the highest point on that podium. And people thought we were crazy when we set out on this journey to say, this is where we're gonna get to. The Penn Mutual Collegiate Rugby Championship is the national college championship for rugby sevens. And the journey from collegiate play to the Olympics passes through the CRC. The first CRC event, 2010, was really when suddenly we were seeing good college athletes performing on a national stage where everybody could watch it. And suddenly we were getting phone calls from athletes who were from playing other sports, like, wait a minute, you know, track may not be my best avenue to the Olympics. I, I want to have the conversation about how I get into rugby. So that, that first CRC really triggered that. Sevens is a variant of rugby union in which teams are made up of seven players playing seven minute halves instead of the usual 15 playing an 80 minute game. You can't hide in sevens. You miss a tackle, they're scoring, right? In 15s, you miss a tackle, well, he's probably gonna have to run through three, four, five more people to actually score. There's more space on the field, and so it's kind of much quicker, much more exciting, and you have to make those decisions much more rapidly with less information. In sevens, it's blink and you miss it. And that's the game. I mean, you gotta cover a lot of territory and you gotta cover it quickly. And so it really has brought in athletes that perhaps wouldn't have been introduced to the sport otherwise. But if you have enough speed, you don't need the space, as we've seen plenty of times with Carlin. It's kind of making something out of nothing. Having Carlin's speed on the field is incredible. You're playing against guys who are among the top athletes in the world, and, and Carlin's making them look like they're jogging. Here's the speed, and he is gone. You put him in space, he finishes. He can do that. No one else in the world can. I'm just trying to gas the dude next to me. Yeah, I'm going to just try to change my gear and set him up. So I'm going to just try to sit him. And I want you to sit just a split second. And if I sit you, I know I got you. Carlin Isles was a collegiate standout in both track and American football. In 2012, he was the 36th fastest sprinter in the United States with a 100-meter dash of 10.24 seconds. And in 2013, he signed with the Detroit Lions. After a brief stint in the NFL, the 26-year-old left the gridiron behind to follow his true passion, rugby. I'm used to helmets, you know, pads, and I'm like, man, what if I get my nose broken? I don't want to look ugly, my teeth missing. So I had all these ideas that was going through my mind, but at the same time, you know, I'm a tenacious player, and um, I can rise to the challenges, and I just took it head on. Whatever happens, happens. <laughs> it's a sport that's so special. If you have an experience, you got to experience for yourself. You're going to have to really be in tune to find out a lot about yourself as a human being, and a lot of people are scared to do that. It's a sport that's phenomenal. It's a fast-paced game. It's a tenacious game. It's never boring. You play offense and defense. When you watch it and you play it, it's going to take your heart. What you're seeing is a guy that's getting better and better every day. With every tournament that goes past, you're seeing him score tries out of nothing, but you're also seeing him contribute to the wider team to create tries for others. And over the last 18 months, he's suddenly not just a fast man, but now a dangerous winger. Everyone. Need everyone raising that level Born to an American mother and English father, Madison Hughes got his start in rugby at an early age. I started playing rugby at school when I was seven. So I was very, very lucky to, to get started in the game very early. It was something that I massively enjoyed right from the very beginning. And at 18, Madison chose to pursue his passion and join the rising rugby program at Dartmouth, where his maturity and leadership had an immediate impact on the team. You've got these guys who are 22, who are successful, they're going on to some great careers, and to not be afraid to be like, all right, fellas, well, follow me here. And that was always very impressive about Madison. In that first year, Dartmouth went on to win the Penn Mutual Collegiate Rugby Championship. To win the CRC my freshman year was absolutely incredible. It was the pinnacle of college rugby. I mean, it was such an incredible feeling. You're playing on live on NBC. I've got my cousins, my family call me up and say, hey, I just saw you win on TV. That was awesome. And so it was just so amazing for me right from the beginning of my college career. By his junior year, he was the captain, and his knowledge of the game and selfless play made him one of the top players in the country. Hughes cuts it back in. Can he do it again like he did against Notre Dame? Madison Hughes with the try. Hughes is now the youngest player on the U.S. Eagles, and not so surprisingly, also the captain. I look at Madison, you know, I never realized he was the youngest man on the squad. 
You know, he's got great composure, great temperament. He's a bright guy. That's a true leader. You gotta have his back because he will play his heart out for you. He's gonna make the right decisions. We're all gonna buy in and we trust him. I believe that you believe in me. He's a selfless player. He's, he's all about moving the ball to the space to ensure that the team operate. He's not interested in whether or not he scores or he doesn't. He's interested in the team score. Three seconds, I've got to motivate 14 other athletes or six other athletes to move forward. That's the type of um, leadership I need and I wanted for this squad and this, and this culture. When building a strong team, it, it's really, really important to have a big sense of community. Talent gets you so far, but what we require is, is consistency in message and consistency in action. We've been on kind of this journey for two or three years now. The team has got a lot closer over time. Being able to play with someone who knows what your next move is going to be before you even know what it is, is a pretty special bond. Everything that isn't moving the team forward, you just leave by the wayside. Everyone wants the success of the team and knows that the success of the team is paramount. And if everyone's really working hard to put all their energies, all their focus into that, I think the team's going to be a good one. Like the men's team, the women's Eagles must continue to come together as a team. They begin their stay in Vegas with a private jersey ceremony. You know, as you guys know, Carmen has put on this jersey representing us in 15s. And um, this is really exciting for me to play and for all of us to be able to play next to her tomorrow. This weekend is really important for just developing our younger players and players that we may not see on the World Series as often. My daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Me and I go back, way back. It's kind of a new team. Like, we play together all the time, but different matchups, different people. Yes, Tank, exactly. It's going to be fun to represent the U.S. Uh, on the soil with you. We've got a good group of girls at the center training every single day. Chris is beast. I don't know if anyone has ever had to tackle her when she's running full speed at you. So it's just a weekend for all of us to develop as players, to develop as a team, and get more depth to our player pool. The team gets in some more practice time before their game against Brazil. Uh, right now we're playing pretty well. Two weekends ago in Brazil we placed fourth, so we're just looking to continue growing as a team and get into that top three going into the Olympics pretty confident going in. You want to walk into the field like you've been there before. So we've been doing this, we've been playing a lot, many of these teams that we'll see in the Olympics. Keep a calm head, keep a level head. Try to focus more on the excitement than the anxiety of the game. Hey guys, we love this game. Let's go out there and play with your heart. Enjoy it, all right? We have this jersey on, we wear it with pride, we play with pride, and we play for each other. Let's do it. Okay. Here you go, ladies. Team on three. One, two, three, two. The team has grown tremendously, but we've also had ups and downs, so we really want to be a lot more solid. We have to play together and stay focused and just trust each other, trust the communication, trust the hard work we put in. Go with it. Don't, like, force things. Specifically, what we're working on is pulling the defense one way and then bringing them back and attacking the midfield. Right now with the decision making, we're just doing lots of reps and practice so that when we're into the game, we just automatically were able to do it. We're able to make those decisions without thinking about it. It should be automatic. But it really just happens like that, and you either see it or you don't. And if you don't see it, and you and your teammate are on a different page, it's just, it's not as fun. The team gets off to a good start with a well-earned victory over Brazil. Uh, we expect to win. <laughs> we, uh, we're gonna go out and play our hardest every game, and we know that we have a lot of competition like Fiji and Great Britain and, uh, Brazil here, so we just want to go and we want to go and play our best game ever and just win the tournament. 
Raised in Philadelphia, Kristen Thomas's toughness and determination make her a leader on and off the field. Hey, you go. <laughs> How you doing? Good, how you? good, good, awesome. good. Yeah, growing up in Philly, you really have that kind of like tough exterior, you know, that kind of that fearlessness that just comes with the city vibe, and you don't really notice that you have it until you like leave the city and realize like not everyone is like this. So uh, this is your playground. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't mind the weeds, they got to cut them. Uh, surprise is still standing, honestly. Uh, yeah. yeah, I wasn't really allowed to come up here and play basketball, but I did. <laughs> My dad worked for the water department. He's like very hands on and like can just fix anything. So I kind of just have that, you know, go get her attitude. Like if something's broken, try to fix it. I watched how she, you know, would knock the little boys around and, you know, get the ball and shoot the ball and dribble. But she was, you know, like that. So as she grew older, of course, the skills got better. So I guess between her mother and myself, that's kind of where she get her competitive skills because her mother ran track. You know, she was pretty good at it. So she kind of took off after us. <laughs> Well, my mom's a cop. She's always just been like a strong female leader. And it was just nice to see like her take on that stuff and have that like go-getter attitude. So that's kind of how I am too. Always an outstanding athlete. It wasn't until she started college that she found rugby. I just got back home to Philly. I took her to school, did all her shopping there. I might have been home two weeks. And she called and said, Ma, I need some sport bras. I said, sport bras for what? We just did all this shopping. She says, I'm going out for rugby. I said, what is rugby? She would soon learn to love the sport the way that her daughter did. When she first started playing, they played a Merlin. And that was the first time I ever saw rugby in action. And the coach came over to me and told me how good she was. And I'm thinking, she just started playing. Like, she good already? She's so fast. I just want to get her the ball so she can run, because that's what she does best. You get her on the edge, and you know she's going to score. On the other hand, I wasn't surprised because she conquers what she sets out to conquer. I love it. I love it. To see my child out there on the field playing the way she does, scoring, and the people in the stands cheering and calling her name and coming over to me and shaking my hand, oh, you Kristen's mom. I, I really can't describe it. It's just awesome. I'm so proud of her. Although Kristen had always been athletic, it wasn't until high school that her parents suspected she might have a future in sports. I believe it was when she entered Hollihan, when she got into Hollihan High School. That's where she did basketball, track, and she did a little cheerleading. Yeah, this is it. I mean, we they redid the floor after I graduated, but this is, you know, the same gym that we used to come to. And I was um, all Catholic in the 100 meter hurdles, the 300 meter hurdles, the long jump and the high jump. And I set the school record for the high jump and I held the Philadelphia Catholic League record for the high jump. I don't know if it still stands, but I had it for like a few years. Hi, <laughs> how are you? I'm good, I'm good, how are you? Oh, 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 you're making us so proud. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, the fastness, this is awesome. <laughs> Thank you. So in we play, yeah, in the Olympics. Oh my God. Kristen is, when Kristen sets her mind to do something, she's going to see it through. She's going to carry it out. And Kristen's mind is set on gold. Needless to say, this is a huge week, really savvy opponent. Effort has to be a given to let your effort be called into question. Let your physicality, your toughness, your ability to kind of express yourself as a, as a guy you won't get it back. We don't have to be perfect, but geez, you may gotta light your hair on fire at least. At the University of California, Berkeley's campus lies a rich tradition of excellence that is unique in American sports. It's the oldest sport on campus. It dates back to 1882. It's an interesting period in time, you know, because there's 50,000 people watching a rugby game at the turn of the century. It's a real privilege to be a part of something as, as old and as prestigious and as rich as it is. 
put on that Cal Rugby jersey and step out onto that field, it's a lot. You have to think about all the guys who have gone before you and what kind of work they've put into it and what you're willing to put out onto that field. I have to think about my dad, Cal guys he used to play with. I played football and rugby at Cal back in the day and you know there wasn't a national championship but we were a pretty good team. So had there been a national championship throughout our entire history, who knows how many we would have won, but the official national championship of collegiate rugby didn't begin until 1980 and we've been fortunate enough to win 26 championships. I became the head coach in 1984, so this is my 33rd year as head coach. Since 1938, we've had three coaches, <laughs> so it's a pretty good gig once you get it. Coach Clark's a legend, there is no question, and he really has kind of set the bar higher and higher for everybody else in this country. Right, and he was doing things 10 years ago that a lot of other programs are now just trying to do. We believe in constant performance improvement. We believe in getting better. We believe as a value that it's not just about what the score is, about you know, are we improving as a team. Something that he likes to say, said, hey, we go to the top public university in the world, but none of those guys out there has a PhD in team like you guys do. Obviously having a great player on the field makes a difference, but you really need all 15 guys. You see like a scrum, you need everyone, you know, all together connected in that teamwork. To solve the big problems, whether it's, you know, education or poverty or disease or the environment, I mean, take on the big issues and say, you know, how do those things get solved? And I don't think they get solved by one bright person. I mean, I think they get solved by groups of people standing shoulder to shoulder, kind of pointing their nose in the same direction. The rugby program really is more than a rugby program. Coach Clark really tries to shape men for life after college just so we can be successful in whatever career path we take, and I think that you can see that through a lot of our alumni. There's a great deal of pride amongst all of us that have uh, participated on the pitch for Cal Rugby. You'll notice that there's a sign when you go into Hudson Fieldhouse just above the door that's a Latin phrase that translates loosely into to be known by your deeds. One of the effects that has on us is that, you know, you get a little bit mentally tougher, you know, if you, if you don't think you're owed anything, if you're willing to go out and earn everything you have. Over the years, Cal Rugby has put an emphasis on strength and conditioning, and as the sport continues to grow, so does the requirement for state-of-the-art facilities and cutting-edge training. Welcome to the Simpson Center for Student-Athlete High Performance. Come on in, I'll show you around. This is kind of one-stop shopping for the student athletes. Football down there, 13 Olympic sports this way. Keep moving, don't let yourself stop. Various locker rooms, this is only rugby's locker room. Nice big lockers for the boys, you know, they have a lot of equipment. Anthony Salver, big man, corner office, plenty of room to stretch out. One in here, this is the equipment room. Jerry Fagoni, Director of Operations. A lot of good equipment, we try to take care of it best we can. Guys work hard. <laughs> if you want to win, you got to work. This is the training zone, 140,000 square feet. Every band, pulley, weight, platform just keeps repeating all the way down. So a team our size with 60 student athletes, you can get them in here all at once and get their work done in a really efficient way. This is one of the real Cadillac features of the building here. This is an underwater treadmill. We're in the diagnostics room where we capture a force plate scan on all our rugby student athletes. This is our team meeting room. And this room here for us is a lot about just being collaborative, just talking through our performances. Coming here on a Sunday morning, you wouldn't know whether we won or lost. You're always gonna have an eight on your back or a six or a four or five. You gotta play bigger, you gotta play stronger. It's about trying to get better. You know, what did we do well? What things can we really build on? That's 13 handling contact errors that all resulted in a turnover of possession. Seven penalties go with that, a story of 20 turnovers. We're gonna have to set the bar a little higher than that. You turn over balls against, you know, a slightly better team in that area of the field, they're gonna ring us up. You kind of see the stature of the man, and you kind of know he means business. The biggest value I've taken from Coach Clark, it's about leadership. You can be the quietest guy on the team, but it's the ability to make those around you better and more productive. No matter what, there comes a time in your life where 
You need to stick your chest out and roll your sleeves up and say, all right, I got this one. Some weapons as well, so. Danny was a very special player. You couldn't leave him out of a lineup because invariably he was going to do something no one else could do on either team, something that athletic. Danny Barrett is the youngest of three brothers to play for UC Berkeley. And from 2005 to 2013, the brothers led the Golden Bears to an astounding six national championships. My freshman year, 2009, we got to play together. And there had never been three brothers playing in one game together in the history of Cal Rugby. So that was a pretty cool experience. I mean, it's fun going into a game, physical game, and hitting people. And your brother's right there. He's hitting the same guy. They were all really good players and really substantial guys. It's not surprising. Mom and dad are just all stars. And those boys are very much the sons of mom and dad. They made a real mark on the program. In Rugby 15s, the battle for the national championship then and now has been against Brigham Young University. BYU first claimed the national championship in 2009 and then held it from 2013 to 2015. I think the most under the radar college sport rivalry there is is Cal BYU. There's never been so many times where a national championship has been played between two teams, except for one or two years maybe, it would have been 13 or 14 in a row. Mid 2000s when my brother Jim was playing, I think kind of the start of the rivalry really came out of nowhere for us pretty much. Some little school in Utah, they know how to play rugby. You hate them on the field, you can't stand them. But then after the game, you talk to them, it's like, well, that guy's a real cool guy, and it's all good. They're highly talented. You know, South African passes the ball to a New Zealander, to a Fijian. You really have to play a clean game to have any chance against them. And if we don't beat them, I don't know who's going to. We're not putting any teams behind us. We're not looking past anybody, but they're always in the corner of our eye. We're really gearing up for that national championship. You've got two really good coaching staffs with quality athletes that are committed to being coming better rugby players. So it's awesome, it's awesome for the game. That competition spits out some of our best Eagles. Danny Barrett has represented the U.S. Eagles in Rugby Sevens since 2014 and has earned a reputation as a fierce competitor. Boy, Danny Barrett, man, he is something else. I've seen this man play with a uh, broken ankle, hand, foot, everything, and he just keep on trucking. And that's somebody that you want to fight with. You want somebody to have your back. And you can just see the people on the other team, they don't really want to tackle him. They know that if you're tackling Danny Barrett, you're going to come out of it bruised and hurting. He is a warrior. He will fight and scrape and scrap for everything, not just for him, but for the man he stands next to. I love playing alongside him because I give him the ball and he does the brunt work and then passes me and let me go score. He brings an electricity to the game that I haven't really seen in anybody else. Much better to be on his team than it is to be on the other team. My playing style is pretty basic, you know. I'm gonna push a piano if I have to. I wanna be the most physical guy in the world. I don't want other teams to like me. I want other guys to say, ah, not this guy again. I'm here to win ball games and that's about it. And if that means running as hard as I can through people or giving the ball off to another guy, hey, I'm gonna do what I can, but I love putting my shoulder down, that's for sure. Ready guys, three, two, one, let's go, come on, let's talk on defense. The tradition of athletic excellence runs deep at Penn State, and in recent years, the Nittany Lions women's rugby program has been the most successful in the country. They've won 10 of the last 21 national championships and have their sights clearly set on another. We've been to the playoffs 22 out of the last 23 years, and we've been to the national championship game 19 out of the last 21 years. When I was here, I won two national championships. I lost three. It's just recently that we've really become very consistently winning national championships. I was really exposed to the program at a young age because my older brother went here and played rugby. So many 
USA players and all Americans have come out of the program. And that is something that I aspire to do as well. So I thought that being in the presence of them and learning from them would really set me up for success in the future. I came to Penn State to play rugby largely because of Pete Steinberg. He was the coach back in the day, and he coached my sister who went to school here, and my dad is also the defensive coach. Tackle, you're back to zero. Tackle, that's two, you got two. In 1995, Peter Steinberg became head coach and converted a very good team into a dynasty. One of the biggest things that I did at Penn State as the head coach um, when I was there for 19 years was to not focus on winning. Winning is the outcome of processes that are really focused on excellence. The biggest thing that Pete taught me was about how my behavior affects the people around me and how I had the responsibility to help other people become the best people and players that they could be. Kate Daly is one of the best college players I have ever coached. She's a four-time All-American, understands the game better than I do now, played for the US, and in fact, in 2014, she was one of the co-captains of the Eagles at the World Cup. When Steinberg stepped down as head coach in 2014, his protege, Kate Daly, was the obvious choice to lead the team into the future. What we want to do is we want to try to make the best choice. So what we're working on here is trying to make the best choice about where we run. Kate, try and keep your head closer to her body, all right? You're kind of like this. Hey, you're doing a great job of getting low and hitting, but you're hitting and stopping. I don't think you heard her, right? So we need to listen and respond. Listening is big a part of communication is talking, OK? So Knowing that Kate went to Penn State and was in our shoes, she just really gets it. She knows what we're going through on the day-to-day -day basis and she knows how hard it is to balance school and rugby. Kate Daly's, she's an international rugby player. That's really cool, she's really driven and seeing her level of commitment kind of makes you want to do that. And also knowing in the back of your head, like watch what you say, because she can probably beat most of us. Great teams don't happen on accident. Great teams happen on purpose. And all of that comes back to your team culture. They know when to have fun and when they need to work hard. And they really, really work hard. I don't know if it's necessarily the coaching, but so much about the culture of the players that are the legacy of Penn State. The group that graduated last year, they won four national championships freshman year through senior year. That's definitely leaving it better than they found it. And the struggle now is how do we leave something that's great even better? Now it has more to do with continuing to win, but also we reach out to the community a little bit more and kind of just making the brand of Penn State stronger. It's just this culture that's not found in many teams and it's so group driven instead of individual driven. I have become such a better teammate and person from playing from this program as well as developing as a rugby player. Mia Beiser is taking time away from Penn State to represent the United States in Rugby Sevens. Mia is the new generation of rugby player. She's someone that played rugby in high school and also played soccer. And remarkably, she was a kicker for her high school football team in Texas, which is a pretty big deal. She's one of the most physical tacklers that I have ever come across in the men or the women's game. And to see her now at the Olympic Training Center, playing for the US, gunning for the Olympics, it's been an amazing journey for her. And it, all of her hard work is paying off. In preparation for their matchup with France, the women of the U.S. Eagles focus on controlling their game and not their opponent.
The importance of teamwork is insane, especially in sevens. You have to know if someone's telling you they're gonna get there, that they're gonna get there, and you have to trust them. You have to communicate everything you're doing to make sure every person is on the same page. When that happens and you're playing for each other on the field, you really feel more of a connection and it only improves your game. You get hit and you get hit and you gotta have the mental power to get back up. That comes from being together as a team and knowing you have each other's backs. We have a really good team connection. It's really important because you can really see the shift when we're all excited and happy and really talkative. So we always try to like raise each other up to that level. We're gonna do good here and then carry on with that confidence to the next tournament in Vancouver and then from there to Atlanta. The women stride confidently into the HSBC World Cup Sevens Tournament in Atlanta. When you're lining up with your teammates and you hear the national anthem, once you do that once, it's like the national anthem is never the same. Going into Rio, I think getting the gold will really rely on our team's connectivity. We really need to be able to read each other well and communicate with each other well what we're doing so that the person to your left and your right know what you're doing as well and as the whole team as a whole. Come together and be so solid and so connected on the field that we're unstoppable. Comes back against the green now. There's the gap, Chavalier. Warwick's run by Chavalier. Warwick's try for USA. Their teamwork and dedication pays off. And after three days in the tournament, they come away with the plate. In the team environment, you really have to, um, sometimes you have to step back and sometimes you have to step up. It taught me how to be a leader and how to be confident in my opinion and go with my gut. You're not always going to agree with something, but as a team, you have to work things out. You have to do what's best for a team instead of what's best for you. It definitely teaches you those skills of really working together with the team. The U.S. Eagles women's team is hitting its stride and looking forward to the challenges that lie ahead. This is the 2016 USA Sevens. For the first time in 92 years, rugby will be in the Olympics. In order to be successful in Rio, you have to learn how to win on the World Series stage. No, but, I mean, Vegas is massive for us. You know, it, it's, it's your home event. You see the teams that have already qualified, notable names like New Zealand, South Africa, and all the way at the bottom, the United States is in. Every time you run out in Vegas, you got all the fans behind you. It's just an absolutely incredible feeling. The United States and Wales getting set to start. You know, it's the opportunity to play on our home soil in front of our own people. Give him the ball. Beautiful run there by Martin Yosefo for the try for the U.S. Watch Isles. You know, we want to solidify ourselves as we're a top four team. We're here to push. Isles, the speedster. You know, a lot of new people going to see what the U.S. is about. Try and the try is good. We're under no illusion that the magnitude and how important it is. But we can't get caught up in that. We have to get caught up in process, not let the emotions rule us. Had it knocked away. Counterattack for Wales. If we play to our potential, we will do ourselves justice in any tournament. But it's going to take a a lot of hard work, and we're going to have to be at the top of our game. Uh, Barrett, what a great pass, and the try by Miwa to give the U.S. the lead again. Ba and Barrett was so strong in the tackle. Because there are some big names and some big teams coming to this tournament with, uh, with points to prove. With a victory over Wales, the U.S. men prepare to do battle with their neighbors to the north. The whole is better than the sum of the parts but you've all got to bring your part. 60 months ago, you know, we could say our, our brotherhood wasn't as strong. Both teams make their way onto the pitch. The more we sweated and bled on the field, it's been pretty incredible seeing us all come together. If you know that person off the field, you know, you're going to know them on the field. You can be able to see the way they step before they even step. Sack test and on sack the test in for the try. You are reliant on one another, not reliant to do your job, reliant on one another to get the job done. Much crisper play from Team USA here in the opening half against Canada. Perry Baker. Wow, that is a new tool in the kit of Baker. And what a spectacular try and score for the United States by Perry Baker. If you don't trust the guys around you, you're gonna you're gonna be exploited. Number nine, Nathan Hirayama. Trying to set up the run for John Moonlight. Just like that, Canada's right back in it as Hirayama gets the try. It's not only trusting that your teammate believes in you, but you believe in him too. Baker with speed. Wow! Baker will go coast to coast! Incredible! 
The beauty and the pain of this game is that anybody can beat anybody. Despite an early lead, the Canadians mount a comeback and force a tie. Without a victory, the Americans are left in a tenuous position in the tournament. On any given Sunday, you can win and you can lose like that. With only hours to regroup, the U.S. must ready themselves for a morning match against the mighty South Africans. The United States and South Africa running on to the pitch. Tournaments that we've had, we need to improve our tackling, improve our defense, because that's something we have let ourselves down a little bit in. We had some faults we need to address. I think defensively, we need to take a big step forward. And another miscue by the United States, and the try is good for Sicil Africa. Defensively, maintain that shape. Only two of you work like anything as the two. Get the full running position, get a win. Any one time, it could be any part of our game that wins it for us. We have physicality, we have power, we have pace, we have it all. And it's whether we can deploy it at the right time and then make good decisions under pressure at important times. I think once we put all of those things together, we're an unstoppable force. That's the tricky part, is putting our power, our pace, our technical skills together all at the same time. The shutout is a huge disappointment, but the United States has already advanced by points into the Cup quarterfinal and must regroup quickly for a night game against Kenya. A lot of people were saying we're sleeping giants, you know, waiting to be awoken. And we still wasn't, you know, tapping in and awake yet. You know, if we're honest with ourselves, we've shown at times we're, we're, we're fantastic, but we've also shown at times how fallible we can be. It's just about doing everything consistently well. I mean, if we can do that, then we, we can compete with the rest of the world. And the rest of the world knows that. U.S. down to 10 healthy bodies. Will Holder took a concussion. The athleticism of the Kenyan team is not to be trifled with. They're big, big boys. Okay, they're big around the hips. We need them to chop tackles. They're small around their knees. So if we can chop tackle them, get them to the floor quickly, win the reload battle, we'll be in control of the contact situation. Last one of the day, boys. Let's make it count. Love it, boys. I believe in you, I believe in you, I believe in you, I believe in you, I believe in you. I believe in every single one of you. I believe in us as a group. We're gonna hunt for 14 minutes as a pack. We go, we go, we go. We know these boys. They have denied us twice now. That is not gonna happen this time. I do not want you to look for excuses. You gonna look for reasons to turn up on that field. And there should be no bigger reason than looking around that circle. I need a 14 minute performance from every single one of you. I need you to set the ball high and raise it and raise it and raise it. I do not care what's who on that field. I do not care if you've got five or four. They cannot live with us. We are utterly relentless for 14 minutes. We go and we go and we go. You've got seven go. brothers on the fence with that. Man. Brothers on three. One, two, three. Let's go. We're back in Las Vegas as we get set for the start of the United States versus Kenya in the Cup quarterfinals. Now this game is brutal. If you don't get your job right. Garrett Bender for Team USA. You make mistakes, you're slightly off, you get burned. And the United States gets the first try. Danny Barrett on the score. And Baker in the transition, he's got world class. But likewise, if you are on the money and somebody's slightly off, you can take your opportunity and you can put them to the sword. Penalty advantage being played. Kenyon's at the breakdown, but they're off their feet and off sides. Test has a free one here. Test with it in for the try. You know, the eye of the tiger is so crucial in the game of seven because you've got to be prepared to go to those dark places to suffer for yourself and those that you, that you play with in order to get what you want. It's a sport that's going to make you dig deep, deeper than what you've ever done before. Yosefo. And you're going to have to keep going and going. States has moved on to the semi-finals. These are all the lessons and the mental resilience and the resolve, together with the physicality, the tactical understanding, the technical accuracy that we need from our boys as we build towards Rio.
In rugby, no good deed shall go unpunished. And as a reward for defeating Kenya, the United States must now go up against Fiji, arguably the best team in the world. Go. Brothers on three! One, two, three! Brothers! Number nine, Tuai puts the ball in play. For, for me, it's about making sure we kind of right the wrongs and we play to our potential. Barrett is on fire. Barrett goes bulldozer. There's no way to stop Barrett. Barrett took a big shot. I think our fight was perfect. Wonderful pass by Fiji, breaking into the open field. In for the try. We stuck together as a team. We fought hard. Nangusa. Physical, just like we want to be. Powerful player, number one for Fiji. Come down to a couple of little mistakes. Vatemo Revovo, the try scorer. Fiji is so clinical. If you make mistakes, they're really good at taking it back and scoring on the other end. Line out, throw in turnovers, and some mental errors all lead to the United States being defeated by Fiji 21-14. Kind of mixture of emotions, but you know, I'm just overwhelmed really with the pride and the work ethic and the way that the boys went about their business, their attitude, their energy, their positivity, and their ability and resilience to stay in the fight was fantastic. Expectation for real, it's gold. You know, we do think we can win gold. Every single one of us is dreaming of gold. What can we do? We can win gold. We can definitely win gold, but we can also bomb out. The nature of Rugby Sevens is such that. On any weekend, there are six or seven countries in the world who have a great chance of winning, and I think we're right out there with any of them. We know we can get there. We beat New Zealand three times this year. We know we can beat the best of the best, so our expectation is gold. These boys have worked so hard to get us to where we are, but they can't just think it's going to happen and they just got to turn up. You've got to be relentless. We've kind of got six months. We're, we're aiming for that, and we're doing everything we can to put ourselves in the best position possible. So that's, that's the challenge for Rio. So we are, without a shadow, contenders. We're not favorites, but that's not a bad thing. But we are capable, um, and that's all you can ask for, and all you can ask for is to be feared and be respected by the rest of the world. And right now, we are. We now have to make sure that we maintain it and continue to build on it. From humble beginnings, rugby has grown to become one of the most popular sports on earth. Its appeal is obvious, a game that's both beautiful and brutal. A merciless ballet of grit and determination, where sheer physicality meets quick thinking. And only through team unity and coordinated drive can greatness be approached. The camaraderie of rugby extends far beyond the confines of singular squads on individual pitches. There is a bond that links all rugby players across our country, across the world. It is a bond of respect and joy and a common passion. More than a sport, rugby is life. And as the Olympic Games quickly approach, the rugby world is eager for another chance at greatness.